Where do the police come from? What's the sort of historical moment within which they emerge? What are they a response to? It's it's all England's fault. <laughs> uh, now we all, There's a kind of liberal narrative about the origins of policing that always begins with the London Metropolitan Police in 1829. They're, they're routinely pointed to as the sort of first example of a modern police force, which is less than 200 years ago. This is a fairly modern institution. But what's left out of that that narrative, that standard liberal narrative that you see in the policing textbooks, et cetera, is where this idea came from. So there, the, the London police are created by Sir Robert Peel, Robert, Bob, the Bobbies. And he got this idea in his previous job, which was that he was in charge of the English occupation of Ireland. And he develops the Irish Peace Preservation Force to help manage a growing number of what they called, you know, agricultural outrages, which were really peasant uprising against landlords. And he could not rely on the military to bail him out because they were tied up with Napoleon and the treasury was empty. And so he comes across this idea of a cheaper, more nimble, community embedded sort of hybrid force that would allow them to act more preemptively, to kind of quell things before they got out of hand, and also to deal with things in a way that preserves some legitimacy for the occupation. That the use of the military often involves shooting on crowds, killing people that further undermine the legitimacy. And if policing could come in and calm things out with less violence, that would be good for the regime. He takes that idea to England, to manage this massive influx of folks coming from the countryside who've been displaced by the enclosures, who are drawn by the new industrial economy. And policing is needed to craft that population into a stable working class, to put down the, the bread riots and the strikes and the just crime and widespread disorder. So it's about manufacturing a new working class. In the US, there are additional factors at work here. We have our own colonial origins of policing in the US tied to you know, the American occupation of the Philippines at the end of the Spanish-American Civil War, uh, the Texas Rangers and other Western police forces that are created to drive out the indigenous population to make way for white settlement. But we also have the role of policing in maintaining and managing slavery. And I talk in the book about the case of Charleston, South Carolina. In the cities of the South, slaves lived and worked, uh, sorry, worked outside the home of their owners in wharves and workshops and warehouses. And policing emerges to manage that mobile slave population. In fact, the Charleston City Guard and Watch is formed well before the London Metropolitan Police but it's never talked about in these liberal narratives because their primary law enforcement mission was suppressing the slave population. Yeah, something I've noticed, I mean, I've not, I've not, I haven't written this in the script, but it's something I've noticed a lot actually is, for instance, when people talk about neoliberalism, there's this story about neoliberalism through Europe, through Hayek, the Austrian school. There's this, this other school of James Buchanan and the, the end of sort of, you know, uh, desegregation. And it seems to me, as you've just very lucidly highlight, highlighted, this kind of this counter narrative of where policing comes from deeply imbricated within the history of slavery in the American South. I, 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 there's a really nice way you put it, which is that the American police, which if this kind of uh, speculation of yours is, is correct, it's actually more of the sort of protean police force than what we have with the Metropolitan Police Service or the Bow Street Runners, their forerunner. It's this amalgam of northern technocracy and and sort of southern oversight of, of slaves. So what, what precisely was bad about the northern bit? Because obviously in the sort of cliched understanding of the American North, the American South, we, we know why the sort of, you know, the, the relationships of domination, oppression are bad with the South. What, what was the bad sort of features of, of northern policing? Well, let's keep in, in mind that even, even the precursors in London were also about this beginning process of forming a capitalist working class. You know, the, the Thames Wharf Police were created to, to eliminate the historical practice of gleaning, 
where workers took the spillage and the overage home as part of their wages. And capitalism can't abide that. So they, they create this protean police force to try to put a stop that and to create a solely wage economy. And we see similar things happening in the Northern United States where policing emerges to bring this massive immigrant population that's flooding into the United States and form them into an industrial working class. They were regulating how people wore their clothing, all kinds of regulations about alcohol consumption, about public interactions that really had nothing to do with, with public safety issues or the law. It was about stamping people into this new working class. And then I'll just give this example. You know, the first state police force in the United States was the Pennsylvania State Police created in 1903. They were created because of the widespread strike and labor actions that were happening in the Pennsylvania coal and iron fields. And local police were unable or unwilling to suppress those labor movements. And so they created a state police force modeled on the U.S. occupation forces in the Philippines to put down those strikes. Uh, strikers at the time referred them to them as the Pennsylvania Cossacks. And so uh, northern policing has always been about a kind of racialized understanding of immigration, the management of those blacks who are in the city, and the suppression of workers' movements and really working class lifestyles.